All right, so this has been a big story the past few days. We're going to talk about this. We'll also get to the response to it. You're not going to be surprised to hear that Republican senators have gone full uh, bloodlust over this. Tom Cotton in particular. Again, we'll do that in a separate segment, but let's talk about this a little bit. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators shut down airport highways and key bridges in major U.S. cities. Pro-Palestinian demonstrators blocked roadways in Illinois, California, New York, and the Pacific Northwest on Monday, temporarily shutting down travel in some of the nation's most heavily used airports onto the Golden Gate and Brooklyn Bridges and on a busy West Coast highway. In Chicago, protesters linked arms and blocked lanes of Interstate 190 leading into O'Hare International Airport around 7 a.m. in a demonstration they said was part of a global economic blockade to free Palestine, according to Rifqua Falane, one of the organizers. Traffic in the San Francisco Bay Area was snarled for hours as demonstrators shut down all vehicle, pedestrian, and bike traffic on the Golden Gate Bridge and chained themselves to 55-gallon drums filled with cement across Interstate 880 in Oakland. Protesters marching into Brooklyn blocked Manhattan-bound traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge in Eugene, Oregon. The protesters blocked Interstate 5, shutting down traffic on the major highway for about 45 minutes. Protesters say they chose O'Hare in part because it is one of the largest airports. Among other things, they've called for an immediate ceasefire in the war between Israel and Hamas. Anti-war protesters have demonstrated in Chicago nearly daily since October 7th. Uh, blah, blah, blah. They go on here. Israeli war planes, planes and ground troops have since conducted scorched earth campaign on the Gaza Strip. That's to put it kindly, if anything. Okay, so you get the gist of it. All of these, you know, very major points of traffic have been, uh, were blocked. They were blocked. And you were getting some crazy images. You could see one here of the protesters blocking the Golden Gate Bridge. So there's a lot to say about this. And I'm curious, more importantly, what you guys think of it. Because you guys know my regular spiel when we talk about protesting. My general rule of thumb is that the best kind of protest is directly after the powerful who have the decision-making process here, right? So in other words, ideally what would happen is you go after the politicians, you know, and we've seen that, to be fair, a lot of these same pro sign protesters have gone after Democratic politicians, they've gone after Republican politicians, they've gone after Joe Biden, um, they've interrupted their speeches. They make it so that their daily life is sort of a living hell and it forces them to rethink, hey, should I really take the million dollars in APAC money and do their bidding? Or will I lose my election if I do that? Because it seems like people are really fucking pissed off about the decisions I'm making. So in my opinion, those are like the ideal kinds of protest. Um, I also would file under that same category, the ones that have a direct, pragmatic, positive outcome. So for example, the one I always bring up is actually, it's like the old Chomsky idea of, the ones who blocked a giant ship that was going to go to Israel that had all of the weapons and the ammo and everything with it. You had people basically try to stop this ship from getting to Israel. Now, I don't know if they fully succeeded. Maybe they were able to block it for a couple hours, and then eventually the ship was able to get out. But at the end of the day, that's two hours less time that they have weapons that they can then use to carpet bomb women and children, right? So in the hierarchy of protest... The top is the people with the power, the politicians, um, people in the military industrial complex, people in the Pentagon, generals, you name it. And usually Code Pink is great at, at targeting them. Then equal to that would be the pragmatic outcome, like I just described, blocking the ship. Uh, there's only positive outcomes from that, even though technically that might be like the one where you are most violating the law, funny enough, but it's also the most, uh, the most moral, in my opinion. And... Underneath all of these things is, is like this kind of stuff, what we're seeing here. So here's why I'm of two minds about it. On the one hand, to steel man their case, you could, just all, you could always point to the historic atrocity we're witnessing to say almost anything short of violence, almost anything is, is good because maybe they block traffic in all these major places and let's say it happens more regularly. Now, it pisses off a lot of people, and they will be mad at the protesters, but the demands are super clear, and people in power, it, would it potentially, maybe, force the hand of people in power? Would it force the hand of somebody like Joe Biden to sort of wake up to the fact that you have a real grassroots uprising here, and they're willing to absolutely try to tank the U.S. economy in order to get a ceasefire, in order to save the lives of Palestinians? I think, like, to steel man their case, it's like, yes, we are messing stuff up. Yes, we are making life miserable. Yes, we are 
screwing people over. All that's true. And the only reason we're doing it is because there's a genocide and you need to stop arming and funding the genocide. Stop making us do something which we don't even want to do, but we feel like we have to do in order to put the spotlight and the focus on the genocide and get you to get your act together and stop sending Israel money, stop sending Israel weapons, you know, sanction them, condemn them at the UN, whatever it might be, right? So to steel man their case, it's like, they'll look at you and say, I know what we're doing is fucked up. But what we're doing is trying to wake up the establishment, shake the, this administration out of its complacency to realize you have a real problem on your hand here. And what would happen if every single day all of these major airports were shut down or all these major bridges were shut down. You can't tell me that after like three weeks of that or four weeks of that, that they'd feel like, okay, we have to do something to try to stop this. Now, maybe it's the dumb approach and they're just like, just go crack some skulls, right? And that'll stop it. Maybe they'll take that approach. Or maybe they go, okay, maybe it's enough and we can kind of wrap it up with sending the money and the weapons to Israel, right? Even though I think that's kind of far-fetched, that's the steel man argument for it. The argument against it is the one that, you know, everybody would make, which is these people that you're targeting, they did, they're not the ones doing the genocide. These people that you're targeting, they're just regular people trying to put food on the table and pay the fucking light bill, right? These people that you're uh, inconveniencing, maybe they even agree with you. But, you know, it could be something where, with actions like this, even though I think the protesters are right on the substance, is it something that could sort of turn people off and say, hey, man, these people are rabid, these people are crazy, these people are willing to fuck up everybody's life. Why should we trust their opinion on anything when they're clearly demonstrating bad judgment here? It's clearly misplaced anger at people who, you know, they didn't do anything. And I'm sure if you were in the line trying to get to the airport or whatever, you'd be really fucking pissed off too, right? But again, see, that's why I'm splitting. I guess, to me, the big thing is, is it going to work, right? Is it going to work? And I, I genuinely believe that going after the powerful people who are making the decisions, it is forcing them to think about this. It is forcing them to consider, okay, the APAC money, the Israel lobby money helps me win elections. But are we now at a point where that's not the case? Where it's actually detrimental to take the million dollars from APAC? Because in the process of doing that and espousing the positions they want, I'm losing like 70% of my base. It's, it's kind of waking them up and making them rethink that. Again, blocking the ship is incredibly pragmatic and moral because you're just stopping the weapons from getting there as much as humanly possible. So on those fronts, I think it, the tactics just work. On this front, I think the jury's out, right? If there was a scenario where they did this time and time again, and then eventually you see immediately after it, hey, the U.S. decided to stop sending mon uh, money and weapons to Israel, then maybe it's possible that that had an effect, Right? But I think, unfortunately, what's more likely is it doesn't move the powerful and it just makes people more pissed off at the pro-Palestine activists, which I don't want, but I know they don't want either, right? So I guess at the end of the day, my point is you have to be, you have to be objective about the outcomes of the various approaches and determine uh, whether or not it makes sense to keep doing it going forward. I will say that the thing that I struggle to get over, right, is like, it's almost like there's a genocide exception to any sort of, um, any sort of concerns about the strategy not working, because it's almost like, <laughs> just throw everything against the wall and hope something sticks, hope something actually changes what's happening. And I think, to be fair to these protesters, that's their, that's their rationale, right? Is like, okay, let's, uh, let's say the year is 1940, and, uh, we just learned that about uh, Hitler's Holocaust and what Nazi Germany is doing. And uh, in this, in this uh, theoretical scenario, we are a major backer of the Nazi, Nazi German government. And you have people blocking traffic, shutting down airports, desperately trying to get us to cut off our support to the Nazi government. Like, if you change the facts to something like that, even though it's inconveniencing people in the moment and they would probably hate it, regular people would probably hate it, it's also like, well... If this doesn't require the level of moral urgency to shut all this shit down, then literally nothing does, right? So I can't help but be sympathetic, even though I think it's not the, the, the best way to protest and to be an activist and to get change. I can't help but be sympathetic because it's like we really are witnessing an, a historic atrocity. And in the midst of that historic atrocity, it's like 
I don't believe in violence as a matter of principle. I only believe in defensive violence. Um, but you want to try to do everything short of violence to get this to change. And, you know, if it does in any way, shape, or form help move the ball in the right direction, then what do you want me to say? And I know that's what, the, that's what these people, they wake up in the morning and what do they think about? The 17 babies who were carpet bombed yesterday and, and killed. The people who lost limbs because the IDF purposely shot, shot at their leg. Right? The, the hospitals being bombed, the schools having planned demolitions. They, like, you wake up thinking about that and know that we arm it and fund it, and it's like, well, holy shit, we have to do something to stop this. What can we do? And they're just desperate, coming up with it. Just, I don't know, do anything. Do anything to try to stop it. And so there's always, like, to me, even though I think there's a very clear and rigid hierarchy of the best kinds of protest, um, and this is certainly not at the top, it's hard to, like, just, just outright condemn it because you know we're witnessing a historic moral atrocity right in front of our arms that the U.S. government is arming and backing and funding. And so it's what you're seeing is desperation, right? What you're seeing is desperation from people. And I know that everybody who's being inconvenienced and it's ruining their day and it's ruining their trip or whatever, I know it's not their fault. They know it's not their fault. Um, but, you know, we all should keep our eye on the ball here, which is stop the fucking genocide, man. So anyway, that's my breakdown of it. I'm curious what you guys think. Um, are you... Uh, let's make it simplistic. Put in, put in the comment section. Are you hard against it? If you are hard against it, tell me exactly why in the comment section below. Are you hard for it? If you are, I mean, I think I know you're just... Well, it's genocide. We gotta fucking stop it. Do anything, right? You'll probably say that. So uh, put it below if you're a hard agree. Or if you're totally 50-50 and uh, like I am, where you can sort of see both sides of the argument. Explain why below. I'm very curious to see what you guys think. My guess is there actually will be quite a bit of uh, disagreement over this. But again, I think the part where all reasonable people can agree is what I just described, which is there is a rigid hierarchy of the best way to do these things. And at the very top is target the people with the power. Target the Pentagon, target the generals, target the, the military industrial complex, target the politicians who are making the decisions, target the president, um, the other thing that's right at the top there is literal pragmatic real world stuff that like blocks the weapons from getting there, right? Those are all very, very, very top. And certainly this is not the best strategy. I think we could all agree on that, but I'm curious what you guys think. Post it below. Hey y'all do me a favor and like, and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know, you want to.